Hello, I'm Rubal Khan from KC Tech School, and the following video tutorials have been created to guide you to use VRVIX, a free virtual robotics programming platform created by VIX Robotics. Hello and welcome to tutorial 10 right, of the, of the VRVIX series. Now let's go through how to solve this maze. Okay, now remember I told you about try, trying to identify patterns? So, and I went through in in the beginning when I when I was talking about this challenge, there was a bit of 250 left, 250 right, 250 left, and 250 right. So that's what I did here. All right. So, and before that, obviously, I defined the functions. So 250 left was drive forward 250, and then turn left. The same for every other function that I defined, which is the distance driven, and then left or right. So 750 right would be drive forward 750, and then turn right, because that's basically what I need. To solve the maze. Move a certain distance, turn left or right. All right. So I created functions for 250, left and right. You've got 250 left and right. I categorized them so it's easy. 500 was only right. There was only one right for 500. It was somewhere here. And then turn right. And then 750 right, 750 left. Okay. Now, I hope you've, you've actually um, uh, got a question to ask here. And this is where I think I, this, this program would have been a bit better. Now, I created this function called 500 right, and then I realized that I only used 500 right once. Now, normally, if you have a function, you want to call it at least two, two times. If not, you're basically wasting your time creating a function if you don't. But when I thought of my strategy, I didn't actually realize that. I thought, I'll, let me just create every distance left and right, okay? And so... I probably could have done better if I didn't create that function and I just had a single um, two blocks, 500 drive forward and then turn right. But anyway, one extra line doesn't make a difference. Okay, so let's see how this plays out. All right. And by the way, at the end, sorry, I forgot to talk about the end. So repeat three times because the 250 left and right was all happening three loops. And then I came here and then I followed through. And then at the end, there is a 1000 here, which only happens once. So drive forward 1000. Turn left, 90 degrees, and then forward, and then call this function again, 450 right, 450 left. The last step, I just need to zoom forward 750, and there's no turning, so I, I just dragged in a drive chain block, okay? And that was it. Let's see how, the, how this plays out. Okay. Cool. So that's the three repeat loops. And then now this part is happening. I was driving forward 1000. That only happens once. So I didn't call a function. And then the last part. All right. And there you go. Okay. So you've 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 done a great job if you managed to get this done. Okay. Um, now there's other ways of doing it without calling function, but that would have been really really tedious. Okay. Now the next thing we're gonna learn is we're gonna learn how to create a variable, which is massively important. All right. Massively important. And you can make complicated things easy by creating a variable. And we're gonna we're gonna see how that is done. Okay, now if you still remember, if you did if you watch tutorial seven, okay, and tutorial seven I actually I went through a task where I had to pick up magnetic disks. Now in that example, that was a different playground, okay, that was disk transport. Okay, but the logic that I use or the algorithm that I use is basically I went all the way to the end, picked up that one, I energized my magnet, picked up that one, came back, then repeated that loop three times. So second time it would go up again, although that was empty. When it came back, it would pick up this one. Okay? Because you can only pick up one at a time. And then it came back. Again, I went all the way to the end and I on my way back it picked up this one. Now, when you use variables, when you learn what is a variable, you don't always need to re repeat that that same movement where it goes all the way to the furthest point. You don't need to. You can actually change that distance, okay? You can actually give an instruction second time around, I want to move two, two grid, grid blocks lesser, okay? So two, maybe that's 400 lesser. Third time, I want to move 400 lesser. Or it could be the other way around. Second time, I want to move 400 more. Third time, 400 more. And pick up a different block. You don't need to travel extra more than whatever you need to. So how do you create a variable? This is how you go. So go to variable, make a variable. Now I'm going to call a variable called distance. Again, from the word variable, you know, it's something that can change. 
okay and it's used in in a program where you need something to change for example in this in this case i need my distance to change all right so i've got a distance variable okay so what i'm going to do is next i'm going to go under variables once you create distance you also see these two things appearing because the program is going to give you an option to set an initial value for your variable that's what set distance to is bring this out and it will also give you an option to change variable so i'm going to run a simple program in this program i want my robot to go forward 200 come back forward 400 come back forward 600 come back that's the problem. i'm not going to pick up the disk the disk is for you to pick up in in the challenge okay that is going to be i'm going to talk about at the end okay so set distance i'm going to start with 200 and then i'm going to begin a repeat block because remember i'm going to repeat that motion three times so 200 400 600 repeat three times every time i want to drive forward right so this is where you actually link your variable to what you want to do because the computer doesn't know what distance is you know what distance is to the computer it's just to the program it's just blah 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 what is distance i don't know until you go to distance and then you link it to this line and like, oh try forward for distance okay he, the computer the program still doesn't know what distance is but just gonna try forward 200 because you've already said distance 200 okay, but you you're linking it remember the programs are stupid you're the one who's the who's who know who understands everything so drives forward for 200 and then drives backward okay so for distance again i can duplicate that that here and then what i'm going to do i'm going to put change distance by 200 so the next step so what's going to happen is this you start with 200 okay so you drive forward for 200 because that's saved in the memory of the program 200 and then you come back 200 and then the distance gets increased by 200. So in the memory, it's saved as 200. But now it gets changed by 200, which means it becomes 400. It's going to go up 400. It's going to come back, back and forth. Again, it's going to repeat for a third time. Next, in the last attempt, it's going to be 600. It's going to go 600 forward and backward by 600. Let's see how this plays out. Okay. 200 back, 400 forward backward. 600 forward backward cool now so i guess you've got an idea of what you got to do now now all i need you to do for this tutorial the challenge for this tutorial is pick up the blue discs okay i'm going to make the challenge more difficult in the next tutorial but for this tutorial the challenge for you is pick up all the three discs by using by creating a variable by changing the value of that variable and obviously you need a repeat loop it's going to be very similar to this so for a start you've just learned variable i'm not going to make it difficult all right so all the best okay i'll see you in the next tutorial to discuss the solution thank you very much for listening